Hello, comic fans. You're watching Bub's Comics. That's the name of the channel. I'm your host, Bub. That's my name. And today we're going to get into something very special. I had a big win, uh, 30 Golden Age comic books. So I'm picking up 30 Golden Age comics, pre-code, uh, with a couple of sneaky codes mixed in. We'll get to that in a minute. Uh, but picked all these up uh, online and ready to show them. Let's see how I did. Uh, so stay tuned for that. All right. So here we go. We're going to pretty much just get right to it. Um, I ordered 30 books online. Uh, they were in different lots. So I won some mycomicshop.com auctions. Uh, link is below. And basically what I did was just bid on lots that they had of Golden Age books. I find that Golden Age lots generally don't sell well. I would think as a, uh, as a seller, I would not opt for lots. I would do individual books and the ones that got good price get good price. And the ones that didn't get as much, didn't get as much. And maybe you get somebody buying multiple in there. That's like, Hey, you know, I want, I'm getting this one. I might as well get this one, this one, this one. So that didn't really happen. So anyway, stick around to the end. Uh, and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll show you something just a little bit special outside of comic books, which you're really going to like it. Uh, and, and real old from 1933. So, all right, so let's go ahead and make me small and get to the hall. Yo, all right, woo, it's working good. Uh, so basically what we got today is uh, I just want to take a moment and tell you to make sure you hit the like button and subscribe and tell your friends and all that good stuff. Uh, if you like comics, I think you're going to like this channel. So first off, I uh, promised my buddy Ranger Sly, uh, he's out there in the YouTube uh, nether, world, nether realms somewhere. But I promised him that I would show a Western book. So this is the only Western of the uh, of the hall. But I want to show that first. That way he can go ahead and stop watching if he wants. <laughs> but here is Exciting Comics number 69. What could be more exciting than Exciting number 69? So there you go. And I'm just, I have to say, of the hall, other than the special books at the end of the hall, this is probably... I just dig this, man. When I see when I see covers like this, I just get super stoked. I just think it's really cool. I, I just love it. Look at that. Cowboys firing away. Looks like he's leapt off the horse and got picked up by the airplane. Look at that. The Lazy Bee Ranch. And there's the Lazy Bee flying the plane. <laughs> There you go. Nice standard comics publication. Exciting comics number 69. Really digging it. All right. Let's get into some war. Now, I am not a huge uh, war collector. I, I don't I really don't pick up a lot at all of, uh, of war books. So I thought this would be a way to infuse, to quickly infuse some Golden Age war titles into my collection. So here we go. Uh, first up, we have Warfront. War is hell. Warfront, number eight, maybe. So I might have these out of order. I thought that was supposed to be number one, but I don't know. There you go. War is hell, or Warfront. So maybe I've got them mixed up. No, I guess that's number eight. So there you go. Warfront number eight. So. Of the war titles I do pick up, I do like planes and like uh, military equipment. I like that kind of better than the straight up, you know, death battles here. But I'm a big fan of Lee Elias. So when I see a Lee Elias cover and both the runs I'm about to show are heavy with Lee Elias art. So look at that. Isn't that fantastic? Oh, Lee doesn't let down. Look at that. Cool. That is cool. All right. Next up, we've got number nine. So here's Warfront. True War exposes. Exposes. Well, if you say so. Cold Steel. Look at that. Got a nice butt to the neck. Some amazing stuff going on in these books. I mean, just, just fantastic. 
I don't think that's a Lee Elias cover. Kind of tell the difference, but might be. He does tend to sign them. And here is number. I can't even read that. They're so messed up. Might be number 10. We're going to go with number 10. War as hell. Warfront. Beachhead. Look at that. So much carnage going on in these war books. Love the planes. Always. Very cool. All right. Here's number 11. That looks like Lee Elias. Yeah, that's Lee Elias. I can usually tell. Look at that. A little bit culturally insensitive now, but at the time, it was meant to be. Bazooka. Look at that. That's fantastic. Oh, it says bazooka. The red... The red lice crawled for mercy as their guts melted in the face of the bazooka. Wow, the red lice. Terrible. Terrible stuff. All right. Another war front. This is probably number 12. Like I said, I like the machinery of war, so I like tanks and planes and stuff like that. More than I like just like the soldiers or the bodies, I like the machinery. It's highway to hell. Look at that. Pretty cool. Another Lee Elias cover. So I thought, hey, if I'm going to bring in some war books, I'm going for some Lee Elias runs. Here's Warfront number 13. Look at this one. Oh, this one's a heartbreaker. It says, their dirty rules of war leave no room for the innocents. Look at that. Joe Serta on the cover of this one. Warfront 13. Check that out. Awesome. They're really big on the bazooka for this uh, ish for these issues. Here's Warfront number 14. Look at that. How they're fanning out the machine gun. Isn't that cool? That's really cool. You got tanks loading on the beachhead. That is really cool. Very cool. All right. We got war as hell. Warfront number 17. Look at this. Very cool. More tank action. Digging that. All right. So there's the exciting and the warfront run. So obviously the latter part of that run is what we're dealing with on that one. But here is War Battles number one. Check that out. Very cool. By the time I was done with these books, I paid about $7 a book. So if that gives you an idea, there's 30 books. So you can do the math. I'm very pleased to do so. War Battles number one. Here is number two. I really like this one. It's got the Jeep in action. They're bringing him home or trying to. See if I can get that to focus for you. That guy in the chin. It's pretty tough. Very cool. All right. Here is War Battles number three. So I guess that's one, two, three. So. And I think this run is fairly short. I think it's only like nine issues, and I think I'm only missing one or two. So there's another Lee Elias cover. Looks like an old-fashioned prison break, y'all. 
Here they are busting through the gate, picking up some of the wire fence with them. It's clearly not their brand of motorcycle here. They're doing their best Steve McQueen impression. Nice butt to the neck. Good stuff. Lee Elias killing it, killing it. Look at this one. War Battles number four. A lot going on there. All right, let's see what we got next. War Battles number, let's see, I think it's either five or six. I know we're up to five. I'm not sure which one this one is. There you go. I should be able to see it, but I don't. It's hiding from me. That happens. All right, look at that. War is cruel, and you can't refine it. Look at that. The flamethrower. Anybody out there collecting flamethrower covers? I know that some people collect all kinds of like little niche subsets of covers, but that is one killer flamethrower cover. My gosh. Here's number seven. War Battles, number seven. They're firing away at that camp, it looks like. The Smoke of Battle. Very cool. All right. So that's my war battle. So it looks number seven. I think I'm missing, I must be missing eight, nine, and maybe number five. So we'll see about that. All right. Next up, you guys know it's a little bit of a silly title, but you guys know I dig it. And uh, not just for the odd name of the book, but just because they're kind of fun reads. I like the old golden age comics that more or less collect comic, comic strips. I, I dig that. So here we have Super Duck. This is an Archie publication. Uh, Super Duck, the cockeyed wonder. I've, I got a feeling I'm going to catch plenty today. School starts today. Uh-oh. Fauntleroy is at the lake, at the pond, catching fish on the first day of school. So Super Duck has grabbed a switch, and he's going to burn that Pop-Tart. Look at him. That's Super Duck number 16. We got number 19. How's your side coming? Fauntleroy's working hard and all the cockeyed wonders got a beaver on a string. How about that? If any of you know anything about keeping beavers on strings, put it in the comments below. Here's Super Duck 29, the cockeyed wonder. Uh, Fauntleroy, stop hugging me so tight and get over on your side of the bed. You've got absolutely nothing to be scared of. And of course, the snake is. Hugging up all over Super Duck and Fauntleroy's climbing a tree. Here's another one. Are you sure we're, we were on the right train? Looks like they tried to take a ski vacation and ended up on a, on a nice sunny beach. So a little bit confused, but honestly, if I was choosing, that'd be the vacation I'd rather have is the one at the beach. So, all right. Here's number 40. That was number 30. Uh, you're getting warmer, Soup. Oh, he's going to have, uh, Fauntleroy's going to have Super Duck pin the tail on the cop instead of the donkey. So no no chance he's not getting in trouble there. Uh, looks like Al Fagali or Fagali is the artist in all these. Here's number 43. Going to let Soup sleepwalk right through that window. Nope, I'm going to open it. <laughs> That's there, buddy. Very cool. Here's number 44. Setting a hot foot underneath the uh, donkey. It's got to knock Super Duck out. Monteroy's pulling pranks on him. So they're pulling pranks on each other all the time. That was 45. Here's 49 with a little bit of grease pencil. We can work on that later. There was an egg here a minute ago, and it disappeared. I don't get it. You will, Soup. He's going to shoot Super Duck in the back of the head. Now, the first issue of this, Super Duck is actually something of a superhero. So uh, it's kind of funny that way. But uh, I would like to get a number one. They get a little pricey. and But I'm just picking up these pre-code. Uh, Archies are fun. And uh, even the ones post-code are pretty fun. It's pretty lighthearted stuff. I don't think the code affected them too much. 
They took the television apart. What a mess. All right, next up, we got Super Duck number 63. Some more cockeyed wonder, but here's that code slipping in on you. Sorry about that. So when I bought these, I didn't notice, but two of the books were postcode. So I might let go of these. I might put these in the old sale pile. So there's 63. That, and they don't have unique covers. It, they just took panels, it looks like, from the inside and colored them. So I don't care for that. I think that's a bunch of baloney. Here's another one. I mean, they're cute panels, but it's stuff you could find inside. They don't belong in the cover like that. So there you go. There's a Super Duck run. Big, happy Super Duck. And now we get to the special, special, special treat. Uh, so you're, you guys are going to like this. Let me show you real quick. We got some big little books. Check this out. From 1933, we got Buck Rogers, 25th Century AD. Nice Dick Calkin cover. And these are the BLB, the big little book. Sometimes you see them abbreviated as BLB. And very cool. Soft paperback on this one. The Cocoa Malt. Come and get your Cocoa Malt. Millions game new strength, energy, vitality with Cocoa Malt. So grow your hair and your muscles all at once. You can see you got to be careful with these. The binds are, are tight, but. Very cool. A lot of fun stuff there. And these are like text, text, and it's like one image of, or one side text, one side, uh, and one side is the old uh, illustrations. So very cool. Buck Rogers, 25th century AD, big little book. But what's that you say, bub? There's more. That's right. Here's the hardcover version. Look at the colors popping on that. Look at the difference between them. Check out the size difference. Look at that. So this is an even bigger, big little book. Yeah, that's right. But isn't that amazing? And the story's the same inside, so... Uh, same, you know, from what I can tell, it's just bigger because of the binding and maybe the pages are a little thicker. So, but, uh, very cool. And you can see that they took the same image here and that it's a wrap around to the spine. You can see that. So it wraps around to the spine. So they did the same thing here, but obviously because the spine was wider, you lose some of the image. So to the spine. So I'm glad to have both. I think it's really cool. I love the colors on the hard. This has a nice gloss to it. It's very cool. Uh, I thought I was buying two. I didn't realize that one was a hard cover and one the soft cover. So I thought I was going to have one to give away or sell or something, but turns out they're both for me. <laughs> and then last and certainly not least, we got another Buck Rogers here. Oh, and that big little book, the hard cover is 742, but the soft cover is unnumbered and they both supposedly came out in 1933 so i don't really have anything else to gauge them by as far as age or which came first chicken or the egg kind of thing uh here's another big little book this one's from 1950 maybe let's take let's carefully take a look here this one is from 1941 1941 Big little book another buck rogers 25th century a.d and the overturned world looks like a little scientist isn't that cool? This one had a little flip action at the top. So it tells you flip it. So it's like a little side story. So I'll see if maybe we can get this high speed camera to see a little elephant in the top corner. Ah, kind of fun. So need to play with that. There you go. That's my haul. I hope you all enjoyed it. Uh, basically, we're just always showing off some uh, cool comics in um, in here in Bub's world. Bub's comics. That's the name of the channel. I mean, we're just we're just showing off comics all the time. We we love it. We hope you love it. And uh, we'll catch you next time. Remember to read a comic and don't apologize for the glare. Bye-bye.